So in this video, I'm going to be giving my thoughts on two films that released this past Memorial Day weekend, and that's Cruella and A Quiet Place Part 2. I watched both of them this past Memorial Day weekend, and I'm going to be giving my non-spoiler thoughts on both of them right here in this video. So the first one I'm only talking about is Cruella. This is the live action film of the infamous Disney villain Cruella de Vil from 101 Dalmatians from 1961, which is actually celebrating its 60th anniversary this year. So it's almost kind of the perfect time or year to release this film. So this is actually the second live action Cruella de Vil that there's been. The first one came in 1996 with the remake of 101 Dalmatians starring Glenn Close as Cruella de Vil. But that film was actually Pretty shitty if you ask me, and it even got a sequel, 102 Dalmatians. This one, instead of being a direct remake of the original animated film, this one opts to be sort of a Batman Begins style origin story for Cruella de Vil, a younger Cruella de Vil, showcasing pretty much how the character got everything that's iconic about her. You know, it shows why her hair is the way it is, how she got her first name, how she got her last name, how she got her fashion, her zeal for fashion, her car, her mansion, her henchman Horace and Jasper, basically everything about the character, you see how she gets it in this film right here and most of it actually feels pretty organic and not sho shoehorned in so it's to tell sort of a good story of how Cruella DeVille gets to be the way she is and the way sort of the film sort of showcased or sort of rise to stardom was a whole lot of fun when you see that sequence and how it plays out to sort of how she gets to be sort of the infamous sort of personality that she is so the way that was done that was done pretty well now, being that Cruella is, Cruella is the protagonist in this film, you know, the film actually needs sort of a real villain. And the real villain in this film is the Baroness, who is a rival fashion designer. And the way these two characters play off each other, it's done, it's pretty fun. They play off each other well. There's sort of a Devil Wears Prada dynamic between the two, two characters. And the performances by the two Emmas, Emma Stone as Cruella de Vil, and Emma Thompson as the Baroness, I mean, both of them, they were great. You know, they really elevated the movie, elevated every scene that they were in, and really made the movie a whole lot of fun. Those two characters or two performers playing off each other. And the guys who played Horace and Jasper, Cruella DeVille's henchmen, they were good too. Now, one of the big questions I had about this movie or the whole concept of doing this movie, a movie about Cruella DeVille and making her sort of like the protagonist and almost sort of the hero is that, well, you know, you're doing a movie about a dog killer and I don't care if it's if that's the way it was in the Disney animated film, making her the hero in this one. It's all like, well, how's that going to work? A movie about someone who wants to make coats out of puppies, but they sort of smartly sort of stay away from that whole sort of dog killer dynamic. And like I said, this is a, a prequel, an origin story for Cruella. So they don't really touch upon on the major plot elements that happen in 101 Dalmatians. They do hint at some of them and what might be to come, but they sort of smartly stay away from that whole dynamic in making Cruella the protagonist and sort of the hero of this film. And being that this film takes place in the 70s, I mean, there's some cool dynamics to it. You get just a great soundtrack. That's a whole lot of fun. The music that they play in this film, and it really does elevate the scenes that it does play in. The film's got sort of a nice visual style to it, sort of this really sort of toned down, sort of grayish style that really works and gives it sort of a great look. And it's got movies, got some sort of cool story twists and plot twists and that kind of stuff that really do work. And I'm kind of like, like, whoa, you know, I definitely did not see that coming. They really sort of elevated the story in a lot of ways. This movie ultimately was sort of like a, a big surprise to me. You know, it, it was really, it was a lot more fun than I expected it to be. I just sort of expected it to be sort of like a cookie cutter, cookie cutter sort of Disney remake or sort of origin story, whatever it wanted to be with the character. But a lot, a lot of the stuff that they did in this film, it really did work. So I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. Ultimately, this film was a, a lot more inspired than most of the other live action adaptations that Disney has done. And the movie ultimately ended up sort of being like a, a fun hybrid between 101 Dalmatians, the original, The Devil Wears Prada, and that Harley Quinn film that came out last year, Birds, Birds of Prey. You know, sort of the perfect hybrid between all three of them. But uh, yeah, I thought, I thought it, was a, it was a pretty fun film for what it was. So I would definitely recommend it if you get the chance to watch it. So our next review is going to be for A Quiet Place Part 2. This was originally supposed to come out last year. And if I remember correctly, it was only days away from premiering when the whole shutdown happened. And so it's been sort of a mad scramble for release date ever since. And over a year later, we finally get it here on Memorial Day weekend. Now, the original A Quiet Place Part 1 from 2018 was definitely a big breakout hit. You know, I had a really interesting concept that really intrigued people and ultimately the film and its concept were executed pretty flawlessly and it was a major hit at the box office, especially given its budget. This film, without giving away sort of major like details about the plot or story or whatever, just because the trailers that I've seen have been sort of vague on what sort of the meat and bones behind the story. 
I'll just say that this one follows immediately what happens next for Evelyn and her family. And I do mean immediately after, towards like, whoa, takes place right after the first film ends. So that was kind of cool, I guess. So I'm just talking about this film. I'll say that there was a sort of a major air of mystery in part one. You know, it didn't really give you much details about what really like what was going on in terms of how this all happened. It just dropped you right into the middle of the story, showed you that you got to be silent. Otherwise, these creatures will get you. And that's it. it didn't really explain much about the creatures or anything like that major things that this film sort of goes into is showing how this apocalypse got started it was actually kind of a little surprising to me i don't know if this was showed in the trailers but it's all like oh that's how it happened that's uh it's kind of interesting i guess and it, uh, major uh, majorly it also shows that how other people are dealing with this whole new silent world the first film only focused on evelyn lee and the whole and their family and their sort of like home that was sort of secluded off in like a forest or something like that this film shows shows more sort of like how the rest of the world is dealing with this situation how other people meet them meeting other people and dealing with this whole creature infestation and silent new world so it's definitely larger in scale than part one there's a lot more people a whole lot more locations and a whole lot of more creature sequences which i guess more people people definitely wanted to see a lot of it ended up looking and feeling like the last of us video games you know with the whole dynamic most of the movie a lot of the movie focuses on a dynamic between an older older gentleman who looks like joel from the last of us and the girl towards like well it definitely looks like a video live action video game adaptation of that video game so that's kind of cool for people that do like those video games and whatnot one of the better aspects about the film is how there's multiple very tension-filled scenes where we're cutting back and forth between two very dire situations for our main characters. And those scenes were doing were done very well, showcasing one character dealing with a bad situation here, another character dealing with a bad situation there, it cutting back and forth, and the music that was playing, the score, it was just like, wow, those scenes, just sort of the execution was done very well. And the direction, the director, John Krasinski, he did, a, he did another really good job with his direction in this film just the look just the situations just sort of the way he played on the tension it was done very well the creatures though are still ultimately what makes them what make the movie and they're still pretty terrifying even though sort of the air of air of mystery is gone from them they're still pretty terrifying they're very just interesting to look at the way they provide some nice jump scares and like i said just when you see these creatures these creatures and the dynamic with their heads how they sort of locate their prey through their hearing their sensing just all of that it's just like wow it's just really just fascinating just to look at and they really make the xenomorphs from the alien movies just look like puppies as these creatures are they got some killer aspects to them i do still think the first film was better though i think the, that film the, the air of mystery that went into it is just like whoa what's this really all about i feel like the tension was stronger ultimately this one was larger in scale but sometimes that doesn't make for sort of more scares or more tension it just makes sort of for a louder film but this one still had a good amount of tension and sort of scary sort of like jump scares and that kind of stuff I would still say it's a good follow-up though actually a pretty really good follow-up just because of how it expanded the world and did answer some questions still delivered sort of a the experience that the first film did so i would say this one is an eight out of ten for me i th I think the film does end pretty awkwardly though so it's like oh well that's how you're going to end this you know sometimes these kind of films just don't know how to end i will say it's sort of it is sort of a, a solid setup for part three where i think they can wrap all of this up into sort of a nice trilogy and that's it if i think i think if they do any more past the part three like a part four i think that would feel really forced i think a part three can sort of wrap up this whole story and make it a nice trilogy and hopefully that's it so that'll do it for these two reviews for cruella and a quiet place part two i enjoyed both of them if you get the chance to see them you should definitely because i think they were both definitely worth seeing worth seeing in the theater if you get the chance so that'll do it for this video if you made it to the end thank you for watching